Hi QPR fans, my name's George Sharp and I'm joined today by QPR defender Steve Cook. Thanks for joining me today, Steve. No problem, that's right. <clears throat> First of all, I'll start with the genuine question of what are your thoughts on the season so far on a personal level? Um, yeah, personal level, um, I think it's it's gone okay. Uh, obviously disappointed with the games that I've missed, uh, especially over the Christmas period, but um, yeah, look, I, I've, I've tried to be as consistent as possible and um, and, and kind of defend on the front foot and, and just try and contribute as much as possible to the to the team. So, um, yeah, I think overall, personally, it's, it's, it's been OK. Uh, just disappointed with the games that I've missed. Yeah, and obviously, you pointed on there the game you missed, the games you've missed. Uh, how frustrating is it as a player to be sat on the sideline watching your team struggle, which I'm sure we can all admit we did for our period? Um, yeah, look, it's never ideal. Uh, the injuries that I picked up um, probably stem from I didn't really have a a preseason, um, so I was always playing catch up. So, um, but yeah, no, never, never ideal being on the sidelines, and and, and even worse when, like I say, when the, the team aren't doing as well. So, um, hopefully, I put put that behind me, and I can continue to contribute on the on the pitch, and hopefully, uh, pick up some more results. Mm. And how did the QPR move actually come about? You just stated you didn't have much of a pre-season. So how did that actually happen? Um, yeah, I was obviously in a, a difficult um, period at Nottingham Forest and and uh, I kind of went after the kind of the, the QPR move. I had different options at um, up the north of the country and, and, and whatnot, but I... Um, was in a lot of conversations with with Azmir and and Jack Colback and, and and tried pushing it through myself and with my agent and whatnot. So um, I would probably say that I I, I was I was desperate to to come to the club and um, pushed quite hard from from my side to to make it happen. And at this current moment, how are you enjoying it after under Marty Fuentes? Yeah, really enjoying it. I'm I'm loving playing. Um, Obviously, it's yeah, every footballer will, will enjoy football more when when you're winning games of football. Um, but yeah, since Marty's come in, we've we've picked up a lot. Um, obviously, had a, a difficult spell of games as well. But you know, it, the, the way the club's been transitioning, it's it, that that was probably inevitable. It's then, excuse me, trying to recover and getting back to winning ways. Um, and yeah, I've really enjoyed playing under the manager. Um, you, you constantly um, progressing under him, uh, changes uh, details for for games. So it's it's very interesting, and um, I think the, the the form and the results have, have shown that we we've, we're definitely improving as as we as we're going and, and still now. No, yeah, definitely. And then there's the stats come out that we've only really conceded nine goals in open play in the last 20 games. Do you see that as a positive or a negative that you're letting so many goals slip through set pieces? Yeah, it's obviously a huge negative. It's um, a massive part of, of English football. If you defend set pieces well, you know, you find yourself at um, obviously the the right end of results. And to be honest, it's not just defending. Um, we we haven't we scored nowhere near enough goals um, from set pieces as well. So it's um, it's something that we're obviously very much aware of. Um, sometimes you can overthink it. Um, you can uh, when the ball goes out for a corner, be a little bit edgy. Um, but at the end of the day, it's uh, defending and attacking set pieces is how much you want to get on the end of it. Uh, it's a mentality thing you can set up all different ways managers will but at the end of the day it's a mentality thing you you need to be able to beat your man be stronger than your man and and it's something that we we do we work on a lot here um, and um, you know now that what's done is done now we just need to improve their numbers because like you say we've we've we haven't conceded many from open play um, top mm. numbers, realistically really and um yeah, if we can tidy up a little bit in both boxes, it will give us uh, a lot more points. Mm, and obviously, as a defender, you're not expected to contribute to goals often. But I did see you have you haven't really scored many goals in your career. 19, I think it was, at Bournemouth. Uh, do you consider that unlucky? Because uh, you seem really good in the air from corners. Yeah, I think um, 
at one point I was scoring a lot I, in the Premier League. Um, I managed to get ten goals, and the season we got promoted. I think I got five. Um, and yeah, I haven't scored many uh, of late, or I haven't scored any of late. So it's really disappointing. Um, yeah, whether it's unlucky or sometimes you can go in a box and like I spoke about the mental side of it. Sometimes you can go in a box and not believe that you're going to score. So I've been working on that as well. And um, as defenders, you 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 have to be able to contribute. I think uh, on and with the goals as well. Um, you know, I, I spoke to the coaches here, and we need to. I feel like joining the, with the crossing, finishing drills, and whatnot because. If if you're not scoring in training, it's very difficult to score in the game. So it, it's something that, again, fully aware of. Uh, something that we're really working hard on and, and hopefully it can come to fruition. Mm, definitely. And under the new manager, we have been trying to play a heavily possession-based game, obviously not as much as some clubs in the division. But do you enjoy playing out from the back and trying to beat the press? Um. Yeah, I think it's uh it's a part of the game that's obviously grown a lot. Um, I think if you can do both, you you become uh, a huge threat as a team. Um, because teams, if they want a high press, you can kind of miss their press and 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 get out of the pitch quite quickly. And uh, equally, if you if you get the right rotations and movements and and being brave enough, uh, you can play for it as well. So I think it's a fine balance. Um, as a centre back, you're always conscious of of um, you know the the potential mistakes that are involved in it, but uh, the the risk and reward that's that's what it comes down to. Um, recognizing when to play and when not, when when the pressure's on, and when you're up against it. Um, so lots 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 goes into it. everyone thinks are oh, playing out from the back or or going long, um, but there's lots of factors that go into you know sucking players in to go long um or frustrating teams and so yeah we we've again we we work especially on uh early early parts of the week we work on you know the the phase one zone one build up play and being able to mix our game up and that's the natural progression of, of football um it always comes background long ball teams teams that one of them play ultimate football I think but if you go back to it if we, if we can mix up our game don't become too predictable um, football is about obviously scoring more goals than, than, than conceding and sometimes you have to take out that um, that risk and, and get the ball uh, in the opposition's half as quickly as possible no, definitely right. It's very good to be versatile if you're a good team. And you personally, do you enjoy playing against a direct style or a team that tries to pass it around you? Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I've got a preference. I think uh, again, you you have to be ready for both. Now, um, obviously, my game as 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 the years have gone by is uh, I enjoy defending. Um, it, it's something that I kind of pride myself on and. Um, so you have to be kind of ready for for all sorts. Fortunately for for us and this team, we've got players that are able to run the channel really well, and also very big, strong strikers. So you get to to face both um, in training. So that keeps you on your toes. And um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say there's a preference to who I'd um, what, what what kind of star would want to play against this um, Eva. Either or they, but they both pose their different threats, and uh, it, it's just more of a concentration thing. Mm. And at the, especially at the moment, bear in mind you're playing with each other quite often. You seem to form quite a relationship with other defender Jake Clark Salter. How uh, how much do you think you two complement each other? Yeah, I, I think um, any stable uh, team has to have partnerships all over the pitch. Um, myself and Jake have. Uh, was obviously been been playing together of late. Um, he's uh, extremely talented, talented defender, and very good on the ball. You can see um, how much potential he still has to 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 keep going. We, I've got to be honest, we 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 rotate in the week with with the other centre halves and uh, Jimmy Foxy. They're they're extremely good defenders and, and players as well. So they they continue to push. I know obviously Jimmy played right back at, at the weekend, but they did yeah, very well. Um, push myself, uh, Jake and I, and um, 
now since the uh, since the January window, there's there's competition in every place, is every spot. So that's that's something that I'm aware of. I need to you can't you can't settle, especially in the the, the situation we're in right now. Um, but a stable a stable back four or back five with with the goalkeeper is is huge in any league and any team that's going to be successful. No, one hundred percent. And just to go back on your earlier career for a bit, how were you initially picked up by Brighton Academy? I think it was. Yeah, I think um, I think I must have been seven or eight uh, when I when I went. It was a centre of excellence back then. So um, a lot's changed over the years um, for our football, but especially down at Brighton. But yeah, so I, I went through the ranks until I left at twenty. So. Um, yeah, I was just playing grassroots football at a local tournament and um, went on a six-week trial and and never left. Have you always been a defender? No, no, no. I um, uh, I think I started as a centre midfielder, played on the right side of 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 the midfield, and slowly worked myself <laughs> my way back. So I was um, a late grower. I I didn't I didn't have a growth spurt until I was about fifteen, sixteen, and that's when I. Um, as as a scholar, um, went to be a right back, centre back, and and kind of progress that way. No, definitely, and it seems like you went through your youth team with Lewis Dunk, didn't you? Yeah, how was it playing with him? Yeah, very good. Um, played to played together for for a good few years. I've, I've known Lewis obviously a long, long time. He's had a, an outstanding career and um, a great servant to to Brighton and. Um, he was always going to he, he technically very good, uh, extremely good defender. Um, but Brighton over the years back then produced a lot of very uh, very good centre backs being able to defend, and it was a kind of mentality and um, the way it was coached uh, back then. So um, yeah, look, it's no real surprise to how how Dunkey's done and um, keeps thriving even now. And obviously, you ended up then at Bournemouth, where you spent ten years of your career, three hundred and fifty-six games, I think it was. How hard was it to leave Bournemouth after ten years? Um, I think you've knocked me over about thirty games there, but um, no, it's, uh, yeah, look, really, really difficult to to leave the club um, on a kind of an emotional level, but on a professional and a playing level, um, I was fully aware that. They were probably going to be going in a different direction. Um, a lot of the players that had been there for a long time had left um, or were were leaving. Um, I was in a position where I was coming into the last kind of six months of of my contract, and um, obviously I, I I didn't have to leave in that January, but it was something where um, I had to make a decision to either sign for a, a great club in, in, in not in the forest um or take a risk that that Bournemouth might offer me a contract at the end of the end of the season so um in 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 that case it was a, a bit of a no-brainer and <clears throat> uh, it turned out to be a, a very good decision of mine yeah definitely and you played in the Premier League with Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest uh how hard is it to play in the Premier League and how does it compare to championship football yeah, the Premier League is uh, is a whole different league. Um, it's obviously the best league in the world. It's um, every uh, for a, for a player like myself, you have to play 110 percent every week to to stand a chance to 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 compete. It's 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 extremely difficult. Um, so I've been very fortunate to play the amount of Premier League games that I have in my in my career. Um, so it's, it's a mentality thing as well. Is because equally. When you're playing against that caliber of, of player, you it's it's really difficult to to excel every game. Um, the criticism comes um, quite quickly. One week you're the, mm-hmm. the best player in the world, and the next you, you you shouldn't be playing in the Premier League. So it's uh yeah it's a it's a highly exposed league, highly criticised, but um, a lot of yeah it's amazing to to be to be there. It was amazing to play the amount of games I did for for two great clubs and. Um, I think when I retire, I'll look back and, and be extremely proud of what I've, what I've done. Um, but yeah, the, the Premier League and the, the amount of money that's filled into that league now, you can see why it's so difficult, uh, or so why it's so hard for teams that are promoted out of the Championship to stay in the league because of the, the level is, is huge now. 
You know, obviously, all the players in the Premier League are really high calibre, but who would you say are some of the best attackers you've had to face? Well, it's, it's not, there's not many games where you, you come up against an attacking force and think, ah, oh, you know, I might I might come out on top today, but obviously the likes Harry Kane, um, Aguero, obviously the, the, the Harry Kane was outstanding. He, at the start of his kind of Premier League career to how he... How he is now, it, uh, he played very different when when I was playing against him. He used to play off the shoulder and be on that last line. And then obviously as the years went on, he, he was able to do everything, really. Drop in, create goals, score goals. And yeah, definitely uh, himself was was an amazing striker. And then you've got the likes of Jamie Vardy, who just never stopped running, never stopped kind of pressuring you. Uh, lethal in the box as well. So... It was, um, yeah, an era of playing against strikers that were extremely um, talented. And, um, yeah, every weekend, every game, you found yourself up against a world-class striker, which for me now, playing where I'm at, it's, it's um, you take all them experiences and, and hopefully uh, as a player now, I've, I've improved, you know. Yeah, I'm sure we're all very we're all very pleased to have you here now. And away from football, what sort of hobbies do you have? Obviously, you have got the football cliche of golf, but um, yeah, look, I used to be a quite uh, an avid golfer. I used to really enjoy it, but I broke my hand um, just before COVID and had an operation on that, so it's a good excuse to um, to blame a, a bad a bad shot. But no, I'm a uh, yeah, kind of left golf behind a little bit. Um, as far as hobbies go, yeah, not too much really. Um, I've been a lot of my time, spare time goes into um, watching football, um, watching games back, co uh, trying to obviously improve my the coaching side of my uh, uh, game knowledge and, and and learning from that. So um, I kind of leave the training ground and as a player, and then at home start looking in ways. Obviously, I can improve as a potential coach and, and my football knowledge so um yeah I don't I, I don't give myself too much time to um to get on the golf course these days so no I'd be the, exactly the same focusing on football but you did just point on your coach it like how you may want to go into coaching is that something you may want to do when you retire um I've always been in the, the mindset of um getting everything together just in case um obviously when you get to the latter stages of your career you want to um prepare for what potentially is around the corner um i done obviously when i was left out of the squad at um not in the forest i was able to be more active in, in my coaching and uh, and help take sessions in the academy obviously when when you're playing it's, it's more difficult but yeah i kind of got my badges together i done my a license and um all the, the first day courses and, and whatnot, whatnot alongside it. So, yeah, you, I, I thought to myself, mm -hmm. you know, you never know, you never know what's around the corner. I wouldn't want to miss out on something by not being qualified uh, to take it on. And um, I think it's really helped me in my playing side of things as well because you you get to learn learn the game, the different kind of ways of coaching on the pitch, um, and. When obviously the manager is very intelligent um he he does little things and different tweaks to tactics it's it's really nice and I still it's a it's a industry where you can openly take ideas and and and, and use them yourself so um you know when when there's good sessions I've, i always put them in my uh my macbook and uh tuck them away for for maybe years to come yeah and obviously you're widely reported as a amazing leader we saw your passion especially at home to Millwall with their Millwall fans. Uh, but uh, how do you think you are such a great leader? Um, cool. um, yeah, I'll never class myself as such a great leader. I think it's something that um, I kind of learned from from playing in, a, in an experienced a team uh, in Bournemouth. Um, I played alongside some some old school centre backs, some some extremely good. Uh, technical centre backs and kind of tried to take a bit of both. Um, the captains that I've played under have always been vocal. Um, I was never vocal as a, a young player. Uh, it kind of was forced out of me by Eddie Howe. And um, I think experience of of 
experiences over your career can can you can kind of lend them to, to players around uh, around you like I've been promoted I've been relegated it's it's something that you want to share because being relegated is 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 the worst thing in football obviously it's um it's something that as a player you you never shift from your CV whereas being promoted is it, it's incredible so uh for the players that haven't haven't done either uh, and look well, we're in a relegation battle right now and it's kind of putting over that bit of information of look you don't shake off a relegation it doesn't matter what league you're in so you don't want to be kind of ha have that on your CV and, and, and move forward so um I think different experiences over my career have, have helped um maybe the, the leadership side um but a lot of it I think maybe comes from yeah the passion of the game and uh yeah obviously the Millwall things and the, the things you do in the the moment and uh, the emotions of the game sometimes you get carried away, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's something that comes from within, and um, hopefully it can kind of share the experiences with the group. And we, fortunately for us, we've got a lot of experience in this dressing room, and hopefully it will um, come through and lead us to uh, clawing us up away from the situation we're in. Yeah, definitely. And me personally, I love seeing passion in a QPR player, and I'm sure many other fans do. But how much have you enjoyed playing at Loftus Road? Obviously, some similarities to Bournemouth with how tight it is to the pitch. Uh, how much have you enjoyed that aspect of it? Uh, I love it. Um, and, you know, we can't thank the fans enough, to be honest. We've, we, we haven't had the results and the club haven't had the results over the last kind of 18 months, two years, and, and the fans have never kind of um, left games early or not turned up. Look at the support we had away at Bristol Stoke on a brilliant on a night. Um, and that, that's at the forefront of our of our minds. We we know how much um, how much the club and the fans, their connection, um, how much this club means to the, the community and uh, <laughs> Uh, it's with any kind of fan group as long as long as they know the the lads and and the players when they go onto that pitch give everything. Um, if if decisions go out the wrong way or the luck's not on our side, look, this will come off the pitch and you're going to get clapped off. And that's the bare minimum. Now we we have to be given. Um, that's something that is, is talked about a lot in 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 the dressing room before we go out on into games. Um, because we we know how passionate the fans are here. Um. And they've never ever left us uh, on the pitch alone. So um, we're very conscious of of giving the fans the the, the results that they deserve, and um, hopefully after this year we can start looking up and and, and being more positive about uh, league standards. Mm, and definitely, and final question: How confident are you, and most importantly, the team as a whole, about avoiding relegation this season? To be honest, it's going to be uh, it's going to sound ridiculous because we've we've been in the bottom three for you know large parts of this season. But I've I've never I've never thought that we would go down. Mm. Uh, I I never I didn't join the club to be to be relegated. It's it's something um, a lot of people from the outside when when I came were saying to me what what are you doing? Why are you going to to QPR? They they're going down. I was thinking nah, like this something that I felt very passionate about. I've never really um given next year too much thought of, of and, and what may happen uh, at the end of the season. It's something that you, you can't really live in 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 the future and be worried about where we're gonna be. But I feel extremely confident that we'll be the right side of the line. I know um a lot is, is being said about QPR for, for the last kind of 12 months. And um, yeah, it's, it's football. You never know what's around the corner, but um, we we feel very positive. I, I feel very positive about our chances and um, it's all well and good saying it. Now we've got to kind of produce the results on the pitch, get the points, enough points, and um, make sure that we, we're, in a, uh, we're playing championship football next season. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you've you lot have been playing really well at the moment. Me personally, love seeing the football at the moment. So thank you for joining me today, Steve. It's been an absolute honour interviewing you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Perfect. Come on, you ours. <laughs>